This blank CDR is loaded with possibilities. I can take home some work documents, revise them, and bring them back to work. Or I can put some pictures for a friend so she can view them on any computer with a CD or DVD drive. Or maybe I just want to play some music in my car. Hi, I'm Aisha Ayub, a program manager on the Windows team, and I'm going to show you how to burn disk for all three of these needs. First, I'll burn a music CD using Windows Media Player that I can play in any CD player. Next, I'll burn a permanent data disk that can be used by a variety of computers and devices. And finally, I'll burn a live file system disk so I can save documents and then update them later on a Windows computer. For a lot of people, the most common CD to burn is an audio CD. If you already have digital music on your computer, such as MP3 files and WMA files, you can use Windows Media Player to burn an audio CD that you can play on any CD player. First things first, I need to pop the disk into my computer's CD or DVD drive. When I insert a disk, Windows first gives me the option to burn an audio CD or burn files to a disk using Windows Explorer. When I click Burn an Audio CD, it opens Windows Media Player so I can start putting together the music I want on my disk. Most of my music is already in the player library, so I'll drag most of the songs to my burn list from inside the player. I'll also drag over a couple of songs that I have on my desktop. An audio CD can hold about 80 minutes of music, so I'm well under the limit. After I move a few songs around, I'll click Start Burn to create my new mix CD. A few minutes later, I've got my mix CD and I'm ready to listen to some tunes in my car. Next, we'll burn a different kind of disc, one with photos that I can give to a friend. To burn that kind of disc, I will need to drag files using Windows Explorer. Let me show you how. First, I'll select Burn Files to Disk using Windows Explorer. Then, I'll name the disk and choose how I want to use it. I'll select With a CD or DVD Player. That means the disk I burn can be played with a wide variety of computers and devices. It also means the files on it can't be changed later on. After I open up my pictures library, I'll drag the photos for my friend into the disk folder and then click Burn Disk. Now I have a permanent data disk filled with photos that I can give to my friend. She has a computer that doesn't run Windows, but she'll still be able to load and enjoy the pictures. The last type of disk I'll show you can only be played on computers running Windows XP or later. That's because it uses Live File System, a great feature that lets you remove and update individual files that you've copied to a CD. It's the ideal type of disk for saving some big work documents I'll need to revise a few times. It comes in handy when I don't have my USB flash drive with me. Once again, I'll pick Burn Files to Disk using Windows Explorer. This time, I'll choose to use a disk like a USB flash drive. That means I'll be able to edit the files that I copied to the disk. After Windows formats the disk, I can copy my work files to the disk folder immediately and then click Eject to close the session. Then, the next time I load the disk, I can edit a file that's already on it. When I eject the disk, my changes will automatically be saved. So, three different goals, three different disks. I have a disk with some work documents that I can update, a data disk with some pictures, and an audio CD that I can listen to in the home and in the car. Each one started as a blank CDR, and then Windows opened up a world of possibilities.